This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now from Studio B, your hosts, Spencer Linton and Blaine Fowler. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Monday, May 9th, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with everyone, and I mean everyone's favorite underdog, Blaine Fowler. <laughs> when we talk about underdogs, I'm, you're, of course, referring to um, the Kentucky Derby this past Saturday, right? Holy cow. Unbelievable. Rich strike and 80-1 to 1 odds going out as the – the, the biggest underdog in the field shocks the 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 uh, horse racing well shocks the world period yeah. by coming from way behind at the last minute and winning that thing here's here's the thing though that I love the most the race is over other horses are kind of coming by and then he wants to fight every single solitary horse <laughs> on the track that's what we're talking about when we say you got to play with a chip on your shoulder <laughs> so he absolutely had a chip on the shoulder in that race and it carried over to after the race I loved it. It was awesome. My favorite part was when he wanted to fight everybody else on the track. It's incredible. Yeah. And the drone footage during the closing stretch. Oh drones have changed everything. The way we view sports, the way we take in just scenery in general. Like, to have that angle and watch him make his move during the last... From nowhere. Whatever, how many, however many hundred meters it was. That was unbelievable. The, the, the announcer, I love to watch that view, the overhead view with the announcer. The, the yes. announcer never even mentions... The name. Why Why would he? Because he was so far back. And, until 20 meters from the finish. Unbelievable. It, yeah, the, obviously the biggest uh, underdog win in Kentucky Derby in horse racing history on the biggest venue. And and the way that it happened, I just unbelievable. It was really, it was really fun. I, I've watched that thing over and over again. So fun. I can't, I can't believe where he made his way from in that field. Rich strike, 80 to 1 odds. That got us thinking about some – almost insurmountable odds that BYU teams have overcome, which leads us to today's show lineup. What's the greatest upset victory? I mean, BYU had no chance going in that all of a sudden BYU fans are celebrating because it was an epic win. What's the greatest? What tops the list in that regard? We will discuss. Also, Greg Rebell joins the show to discuss a little BYU baseball who swept over the weekend, BYU basketball, adding some new key pieces and BYU football, are they, should they just plan on being a top 20 team at this point? Is is it all just a foregone conclusion? We'll discuss that as well with Greg. Not to mention what other pieces now BYU basketball has in the works or should be having in the works. Blaine, that leads us to today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Well, let's start. Let's start with basketball. Rudy Williams commits to BYU over the weekend, the basketball guard. Um, 6-2 guard out of Coastal Carolina. He finished uh, ninth in the Sun Belt in scoring this last season, averaging 14.7 points a game. Scored in double figures 24 times last year. And here's what I like, shooting percentages, 50.9% from the field, 44.7 from three. Wow. BYU lacked three-point shooting last year on a consistent basis, 44.7 from three. So after playing at Northeastern Oklahoma and A&M as a JC player, and then getting his Division I start at Kansas State, he transferred to Coastal Carolina. He's got just one year left to play. So one year remaining, and uh, BYU hopes he'll have a big splash. I, I think they're hoping that Rudy can fill that huge need to have a point guard. Certainly, yeah. Has BYU solved the point guard issue? We'll talk about that in just a moment. I mentioned the BYU baseball sweep. Not all sweeps are created equal because the Cougars go on the road in Malibu and beat a very good Pepperdine team in all three games. And not just that, they had to rally in most of these games. Ryan Brady, BYU's ace, held the wave scoreless for five and a third, his longest outing in the season amidst that three-game sweep. BYU now has moved from eighth to fifth place in the West Coast Conference standings. They return home to play Dixie State at Miller Park tomorrow. And then they're pacing now, Blaine, for a for sure part of the West Coast Conference postseason tournament. And we wouldn't have said that a week ago. Hey, interesting note from Pepperdine. One of the games, they got caught in traffic. There's a problem. They arrived just in time for the game. No batting practice, and they won. Yeah. Maybe that's the formula. The, the bat. <laughs> the the, the bus barely got to the field. It's like, hey, we ain't got time. We're going to play this. this. Show's just going to play. And they won. That's how it goes. So, hey, let's move to softball. Softball sweep as well. Um, they dominated this past weekend, sweeping the Pacific Tigers 3-0 in that series on the road in Stockton. They outscored Pacific 24-0. 
and hit eight home runs through the, all three games. The, the Cougars improved to 38 and 10 on the season, 10-2 in conference play. They're still two games back uh, of first place behind LMU, and they play next here at home against Utah State. Yeah, it's two games tomorrow. because LMU won the head-to-head. -head, so, right. I mean, they could share the conference uh, conference crown, but it looks like LMU's going to end BYU's streak of 12 straight years winning the conference. Unbelievable. Track and field. Let's start with the eighth-ranked BYU women and throw in some 13th-ranked men's team as well. The men and Kenneth Rooks won the 3,000-meter steeplechase, which is now the third best time in BYU history with a mark of eight minutes 31. Or sorry, eight minutes 31 seconds, 19 hundredths. The team returns to Provo to host their second and final home meet this week at the BYU Last Chance Meet. They call it the Last Chance Meet because it's the last chance to qualify to qualify for the NCAA championships. Exactly right. So. And I'm sure we'll see some qualifiers there. Some some big names will show up. So uh, let's move to women's golf. BYU women's golf currently competing at the NCAA Franklin Regional of the NCAA Championships in Tennessee. Um, we'll we'll update scores uh, throughout uh, the show today as they're as they're just coming and currently playing. Uh, the team won in Knoxville back in September when they won the Mercedes-Benz Collegiate Championship. So familiar place to be. Hey, Tennis Tennessee's been good. Yeah. Took care of business in Knoxville. Now go take care of business in Franklin. There you go. National Women's Soccer League update. Not surprisingly, it includes Ashley Hatch and her latest scored another goal for the Washington Spirit, albeit in a 2-1 loss. Meanwhile, Michaela Klopp and the Orlando Pride take a 1-0 win over Angel City FC. A little USFL news for you. Zach Daw and Corbin Kafusi with the Tampa Bay Bandits. They lost to Birmingham Stall the Birmingham Stallions over the weekend. Other uh, team now moves to third in the South Division with a 2-2 two two record. BYU men's lacrosse starts round one of the MCLA National Championships today. The game against TCU, they're looking to defend their 2021 national title. Listen, BYU lacrosse, whether it's lacrosse and rugby on the club scene, BYU is always in the mix to win national championships. The women's lacrosse team also competed over the weekend, finishing with a 1-1 one -one record, a win over ASU, and a loss to UCLA. You know, just another run through the Pac-12, right? Let's hope for a 2-0 <laughs> and a, a record against the Pac-12, but whatever. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Rudy Williams has joined BYU basketball, and now the Cougars seemingly have their point guard. We know that BYU has a number of holes to fill on that roster, but, man, to not have to rely on a return missionary in Dallin Hall to come in and start at point guard, then I'm sure the coach's got to be feeling pretty good. However, Blaine has with one, just one player, BYU ultimately solved their point guard issue. They've made progress towards solving their point guard issue uh, because Rudy Williams is a very, very solid addition to this roster. An experienced player, um, a guy that's been a leader at Coastal Carolina, a consistent player. Um, I like the fact, and we, we just mentioned it in, in our, uh, um, our rundown of the news, that his shooting percentages, you look at that, field goal percentage of 50.9. Now remember, he's one of the top 10 scorers in that league and the leading scorer for Coastal Carolina. So defense is designed to shut him down, but he still shoots 50.9% from the field. And three-point field goal is 44.7. That's outstanding three-point shooting. Uh, he's also a solid rebounder from the guard line. He's a three-level scorer, so he's a guy that can step back and knock down threes. He can attack you off the dribble and finish at the rim. He has a nice mid-range game. And he's also a triple threat in that, that he can shoot and score, he can distribute the basketball, and he can go rebound the basketball from the guard line for you. So I, I think it's a really, really nice addition. And BYU needed somebody with experience at that position to come in, be a calming influence, and kind of get this team into, into their stuff. And I think it allows Dallin Hall, because yes. I think that's the rest of the yes. answer, right? It allows him to not have to be the man immediately off of his mission. It allows him to grow into that. I, I do think that Dallin Hall will have an increasing role as the season progresses. Um, but but he, along with the other two return missionaries, um, with, with uh, uh, Toulson and Saunders, I think they'll all kind of grow into their roles. Hey, a couple weeks ago we are going, if BYU, if BYU doesn't get somebody that's a veteran at that position – are they going to have to rely on a return missionary immediately? This is good news that the answer is no, they don't have to immediately. I look at his numbers that you just pointed out, and my first thought is, man, they look a lot like T. John Lucas's numbers. Very balanced mm -hmm. score, good from the field. However, Rudy is a better three-point shooter than mm -hmm. T. John Lucas was. You talk about being a three-level scorer. That's what he will bring to BYU. And, man, do the Cougars desperately need consistent three-point shooting.
Without as good as Alex Barcelo was, and he was called the greatest shooter in the country by Jay Billis, and he probably was. BYU was so inconsistent around him that teams could key on Alex, take shots away from him, and then just kind of dare BYU to beat them with other guys shooting threes. Now, Rudy Williams, we're hoping, joins a much more consistent Trevin Nell and Spencer Johnson, if not another scoring guard that is yet to come through the transfer portal, so that that shooting will be a little bit more consistent, and you have to defend more than just one guy. Yeah, and, and hey, with that, you look at, at the backcourt now and what's coming back. You just mentioned Trevin Nell and Spencer Johnson and Dallin Hall. So you got you got two returning guys that come back from the roster. Rudy Williams, who's an experienced guy coming from Coastal Carolina via the transfer portal, and then Dallin Hall. P- pretty solid group. To your point, those two guys in the middle, Trevin Nell and Spencer Johnson, um, I'd like to see the three-point percentage for both of those guys be in the 40s and and shoot it with a little bit more consistency. They're both very capable. Um, I, I think Trevin Nell is capable of being a 45% plus guy from that three-point line. If that if that's the case, if those two can, can raise their game and be more consistently knocking down shots from three, Rudy Williams lives up to his billing and shoots the way he did um, at Coastal Carolina, that, then that allows the, the last guy on the end, down hall, to, to grow into his game. And, and Hall's a guy, like, just like we mentioned with Rudy Williams, that he can take you off the, off the dribble and finish at the rim. He can dunk it on you. Um, he's got a nice mid-range game. I like his ability to attack off the dribble and do that, but also a very, very fine shooter. And so you got to give him some time to get his legs back, to progress in the system, to get used to bigger defenders and longer guys inside and all that. There's a big adjustment coming out of high school um, and when you think about a return missionary, there's a getting your body back and making the adjustment from high school to college. So this gives him time. I think I think Hall's going to be a phenomenal player. Sure, he's a he's a Big Twelve guard, but he needs some time, and Rudy Williams gives him that time. So. Okay, yeah, and, and again, Rudy Williams is not a Big Twelve guard. He will play one year, right. his final year at BYU, and then be gone. And then again, BYU is hoping that Dallin Hall steps in and. The question then is, is there somebody else down the pipeline that's handling right. the ball? And, and that's my question for you. Let, let's stick with basketball in this discussion. So, so if that's the point guard, if Rudy Williams is the point guard and the guard line is what we talked about, what's next for BYU? Are there other pressing needs that have to be filled on this team for them to compete at a high level next season? Yeah, for me, immediately, I just look at the front court. And if, if we want to pinpoint like an issue that BYU had last year, Clearly, it was the fact that they lost both of their starting bigs seven games into the season, right? And I know BYU went and beat Oregon and beat San Diego State, and they did so without real size. But then teams in conference are like, okay, well, we're going to figure out how to guard these guys because they don't have any size. And that's exactly what happened. It became really, really difficult to win without any size. So to me, the, the clear answer is BYU needs some guys to join Fusini Traore and Atiki Ali Atiki in the post. And they need experienced guys, like plug and play right now. Because I think it's too much to ask Atiki to play starter minutes right now. I just think he's super athletic and super long and a defensive presence, but he's still just raw. He, they, they've got to work out some things with Atiki. And who knows what they can do in the offseason. Uh, I imagine he'll make great progress. But I still feel like BYU needs a junior or a senior big guy to step in and play right now. So that's where I imagine the attention goes now is, okay, find some size and then go back and look for somebody else on the point guard or on the, on the wing guard line, uh, something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm right with you. And here's what I think. More specifically, a big guy to add depth with, with these guys, but maybe a stretch big. So, so if they can go find a 6'9", 6'10", 6'11", guy that can play the five but can take people away from the basket and maybe defend away from the basket a little bit because where BYU can get in trouble is uh, Atiki and Foos, if, if you play these teams like San Francisco where the, the bigs, one, you know, frankly, one through five, all rotate out to the perimeter and can shoot threes and cause you problems out there, um, if they can find a big that's that type of big, that, that can be kind of a stretch stretch big, that can get out on the perimeter and defend, that can force teams to defend the perimeter with their five or with their four, that would be ideal. Now, I don't know if that guy's out there. That would be the perfect addition to me. But regardless, you've got to have – regardless if you can get that guy or not, you've got to get some depth. Even if it's just another big to plug in there, you've got to have depth on that front line to, to defend inside and, and to uh, spell these guys. I think Atiki's going to take a giant jump this year. And Foose was already terrific. I think he still is going to take a big jump. The, the ceiling for those two bigs that were freshmen this last year is really high in my mind because of their skill set. So the other, but here's the question I have for you. 
I mean, you and I, we talk all the time. Have you heard anything about an assistant coach? No. Because we're, we're talking about no. players. Because I, th- I think they need a big – I think they could use a 6'6 six, six or 6'7 six, wing. They could play the 3 and the 4. But what about an assistant coach? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that need too. Okay, I mean, obviously we're focusing on the roster. But, goodness, yeah, it's, it's been very, very quiet on that front. It's probably because it has been such a glaring need with the four open scholarships – for rostered players that that the coaching position has just kind of like fallen into the shadow but that's huge for Mark Pope replacing Chris Burgess because Chris Burgess was the guy that worked and developed those big men so nicely over the past five years Uh, so I mean yeah that's interesting you bring that up what does the coaching position look like right now we don't we don't know we haven't heard anything because they're trying to fill now three scholarships remaining after Rudy Williams takes one of those and we know that we know Mark Pope told us a few weeks ago that um, that he's got some ideas and he's got some guys that he's talking to to fill that role and at, and at BYU it's hiring any staff position so a coaching position is especially very visible it's it's a process that takes some time so I'm certain there's some things going on behind the scenes. We know that Mark Pope, that guy, is is having conversations and has some ideas about who he can fill that role with. But it's just funny that we haven't even thought about that. It just hit me today. I'm thinking, yep, they got to get it. They hopefully get a big wing and another big to to complement Rudy Williams. Hope hope these freshmen come back and play phenomenal. And I thought, wait a minute. They still have a coaching yeah. vacancy that they have to fill, and that's a big deal. So much attention has been paid to the four open scholarships, rightfully so, that, yeah, that assistant coach job has just kind of faded to the back. Yeah, and Chris Burgess was a phenomenal recruiter, and so they got to get somebody that can not only help with the big men uh, like he did, but they need somebody that's plugged in and can recruit. And maybe Mark finds somebody from a different part of the country that can recruit a different part of the country. That would be fun. We're just getting started. And BYU had guys entering the roster as late as late July, early August. Right. So, I mean, this yeah, thing's going to go all summer long as BYU looks to fill their roster. We have a quick update from the golf course in Franklin, Tennessee. BYU women's golf in the NCAA regional in seventh place early. Three over as a team. Leela Naliai leading the Cougars. She is one under through seven holes and tied for fifth individually. The top four teams advance out of each regional. There are 12 schools there. Top four advance on to the next round. BYU currently in seventh. It's very early, but we told you we'd update you. Well, there's your update. Leela Naliai doing really, really well. Uh, Two strokes off of the lead, I believe, BYU. uh, BYU's Leela Naliai. So there you go. Off, oh, sorry, off of fourth place. There you go. There you go. Our so. question of the day. And we're going to call an audible here. We've been talking a lot about basketball, roster needs, and whatnot. But we're going to go back to the introduction to today's show. And in line with Rich Strike's unbelievable run down the home stretch to win the Kentucky Derby and 80 to 1 odds, I mean, just blowing everyone's mind in that way, win that tournament or win that race. Got us thinking, okay, well, what's the greatest upset win in BYU history? And we want you to tell us in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Ooh, I like this first one. At BYU Arnold's on Twitter answers, BYU football against Boise State 2019 comes to mind. The Cougars were 2-4. and four. Coming in with the two victories in overtime and four ugly losses had just lost at USF, a bad USF team to four and eight. BYU was starting a third string quarterback, Baylor Romney. 14th ranked Boise State was six and oh. They're coming off a 10 win 2017 and eyeing a New Year's six. BYU wins that game. That unexpected victory turned the corner for the Kalani era. Man, I like that BYU's one. BYU's been a different football team since that victory. If we're talking turning point, that's a man, that's a who is that at BYU Arnold's? Yeah, that's I believe a great BYU take. was a two touchdown underdog at home going into that game. That's a great. That's a great take. So, uh, and then uh, Terminator is that at at at, at, at the, the underscore, underscore Terminator. Terminator? Yep. Wisconsin, twenty eighteen. Spread was minus twenty two. He says, I believe the spread was minus twenty two in favor of Wisconsin, while BYU only passed for one hundred twenty yards with one fourth of them coming from eleven <laughs> hefo. That win was by far the most unexpected win on the road in Madison. That was something. See, I'd forgotten about that one, too. That, that was pretty unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, one and one BYU just lost to, I believe it was Cal at home. But, yeah, just a, just a brilliant I, I game plan by Jeff to, Grimes. I don't and, get to brag about the, the kids very often, but that's, that's the game where uh, a snap on the ground for the game-winning field goal, 
And one Gavin Fowler picks it up he off the ground, saved gets the it day. down, and they make the field he goal. And they win the, the game. game. Yes. So there you go. He saved the Gavin Fowler's seriously saved the game. When, when can a holder ever save a game? That's the one time I can ever remember a holder <laughs> save the game. And Kalani <laughs> said it in the post game. So. Hey, those are two off the radar ones. We, yeah, we've we'll got talk our about some other coming ones. up. Yeah, we'll talk about some others. Those are great. Hashtag BYUSN if you want to join the conversation on social media. Yeah, coming up. Kyle Van Noy tackles Cornhole? Uh, what? What? Why not? He's going to San Diego, play a little cornhole, Whatever. it's all good. And Greg Rubel, the voice of the Cougars, joins us to discuss a sweep of baseball, basketball editions, and is BYU for sure going to be a top 25 AP team when it comes to football season? This is BYU Sports Nation. Okay, man, you got this. It's not that bad. Okay, it's a little bad. Just do it. Woo! That was un. Believable. Some things seem scarier than they really are, like buying a home. But your loan officer at Intercap Lending will help you get pre-approved and walk you through every step of the process. Intercap Lending, a name you can trust since 1978. I'm okay. I'm okay. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at trioorum.com. spontaneous optimist who doesn't give up. Describe Ruby in five words. She's always a team player. Deep as an ocean. Hopeful, inspirational, fun. Inquisitive and determined. Describe Ruby in one word, caring. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball hosts Dixie State tomorrow at 7 Eastern Time. You can watch the game on the BYU TV app or listen live with Greg Rebell on the BYU radio app. It's very fitting we're discussing BYU baseball as we welcome in our first guest of the day. His name is Greg Rebell, the voice of the Cougars, fresh off a trip to Malibu, California, and a sweep of a very good Pepperdine Waves baseball team. Greg, welcome back to Utah. Uh, it's a happy welcome back right after a sweep. Uh, absolutely. And the week actually began in Fullerton. Uh, it was a four-game SoCal week, and they won all four games. Of course, you throw on the game they won last weekend at San Francisco. Five-game win streak now uh, for the BYU Cougars. Or just like that, in fifth place now in the West yeah. Coast Conference standings. Top six shape. make the postseason. Yeah, how does the rest of the season now shape up for the Batcats as they look to position themselves for the West Coast Conference tournament. Tips up well. You'll have a couple in-state games, the midweeks against Dixie tomorrow and then Utah next week. But then it's home series against Pacific, which is the cellar dweller, the WCC. Then a good LMU team. Uh, but uh, BYU's positioning well for the conference tournament now. Uh, I, I think a top four finish is, is probable and a top three finish is possible. Uh, top three might be a bit, a bit too much to ask. We'll see how Portland finishes. That's the team currently uh, in third. But with LMU right ahead of BYU and the Cougs playing LMU to finish the season, it's kind of in their own hands as to where they kind of finish, whether you know they get as high as, as, as four or three. But I, th I think four looks good. Five's comfy for now, but there's still room to move. You know, we look back not that long ago, a week ago, and they were in eighth and looking on the outside of the tournament because you have to be in the top six to be in the tournament. What's the difference in this last week to where they were the week before? Well, the funny thing is they're actually playing really good baseball. Even though they weren't winning series, they would lose a series 2-1, but be a squirrely player two away from winning this series or maybe even taking a sweep. It's been that kind of year. There have been a handful of games 
you know, kind of that just got away from BYU. Um, those games go BYU's way, a play here or there, and they're looking at an at-large candidacy right now. That's not the situation at this moment, but they're showing now the kind of team that they've kind of been for a while, even though the results weren't always there. But now they've got five in a row, and now they had a sweep uh, on the road. And not only that, the teams in front of BYU both got swept, and so it really was a big, big weekend. When BYU makes it to Stockton this past weekend that just got played, we'll have a big reason to do with it. Fantastic stuff on the baseball team. Greg Ravel is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Huge weekend in Cougar news. As we transition now to basketball, Rudy Williams announces that he is leaving Coastal Carolina, and he will be the point guard, we assume, for Mark Pope in BYU basketball. How does that impact now what this roster is going to look like with a point guard in place? Well, some stability and some reps and experience, you know, at, you know, as a ball handler, which I think is pretty key right now more than anything else. It's not a Big 12 piece of the puzzle. He's got one season left, right? Uh, so it'll be a transition piece for BYU, but it's really something Cougars, uh, the, the Cougars lacked where reps at that position, they'll have them now. And it's a guy that, you know, once upon a time as a, as, as a lower-level player led the nation in assists. And, and he's got a handful of triple doubles uh, in his past portfolios as well. So clearly he's shown that ability and uh, you know, can be anyone who leads the nation and assists in a collegiate level um, can be somebody who can really help you there at point. And that was a glaring need for BY. Everybody's looking going, man, who's going to play point guard? Alex Barcelo's manned that for so long. So, so let's say that, that he is the solution to that. And maybe Dallin Hall come back from Michigan help there. But what's next for Mark Pope here in this offseason? What does he got to do now? Well, Antoine Davis makes his decision at 1 o'clock today, and BYU's right in the mix, you know, for Antoine. That's, that, that, that's the next, you know, puzzle to either fit in or stay out. You've got to try and replace. So let's see what Antoine Davis decides to do this afternoon. And then maybe, you know, I, I, I think there's probably some front court, um, you know, depth that, that's needed right now w with the team. And, uh, you know, there, there are players that we don't know about, that coaches do know about, that they're probably in with. Um, and all these pieces have to fall into place here in the weeks to come. How much do you anticipate the three returning missionaries will factor into this year on the court with Dallin Hall and Richie Saunders and Tools? And like, how much do you yeah, expect them I, to play? I wish I could say that I know, but it's just such a crapshoot with return missionaries as to who's really ready and what ready looks like and, and, and who can look the best the quickest. But, uh, I know that there are three players that the coaches were excited about, and I'm excited to watch them, you know, get into the mix. But how much can you really depend on, uh, you know, someone in that situation? It's, it remains to be seen. Um, you know, not everyone's T.J. Haas. Uh, when he, you know, comes back and you're like, okay, let's get him right in, and there he goes. He's a starter from day one. Uh, but those are the, those are special players. That's it. It's interesting. We talked to opposing coaches, and they would just say, T.J. Haas. He just starts full speed, and he goes full speed all game. It doesn't matter how many minutes he plays. He never wears out. I think he just – I don't even think he has to work out. If he, just Genetically, he's a freak that could just go. But that's not always the case for, yeah. for missionaries. Right. This is Mark Pope's first real recruiting class that – you know, these are the guys who recruited in his first class that were missionary guys. So, so now is he teed up for the next couple of years for guys to be coming back that will be impact players? So this kind of pump is primed and ready to go? I'd like to think so, but with the transfer portal um, scenario, it seems like like best laid plans now are are you know kind of tossed asunder every year. Um, players you thought you'd have for a few years, you know, go somewhere else. Uh, we saw examples just recently with BYU on how that happened. Guys that they were counting on uh, to be here aren't here anymore. Well, speaking of the transfer portal, BYU football is hoping that they have taken firm advantage of that with Christopher Brooks coming from Cal, Kingsley Suamataia coming from Oregon, Houston Haymuli from Stanford, among others. And now BYU with the returning offense that they have, we're seeing all these preseason polls come out. They're everywhere from number nine to number 16 to number 19. Uh, we see them as, as low, if you want to call it that, as number 23. But, Greg, where do you expect BYU to show up in the preseason AP Top 25? Because... I'm having a hard time putting my finger on where exactly they're going to show up. Is it okay to say anywhere in the poll? Like, any, As long as they're in the top 25, I'll take that for preseason pub. I'd be happy it's with that. It's been 13 years yeah. since they've been a preseason top right. 25 team. It doesn't mean everything, but it means something, right? And, and a lot of those first few weeks depend on where you were to begin the season. If you're in the poll, you can stay in for a while. Uh, just in the poll would make me pretty happy. Uh, and, and although it's a big piece you miss in Tyler Algier, uh, you know, having to replace a running back is not like having to replace a quarterback, you know, and, and Jaron Hall with as many pieces as he has around him and the O-line the, the way it is, uh, you know, defense, 
I think there are high expectations for that defense this year. I think it's a, it's a good spot to be in, even though they are missing a really good player in Tyler. I mean, there, there have been years in in the last several when BYU is ranked that they weren't in the preseason, and we are up close and see it, and we think, why? Why is nobody paying attention to these guys preseason? What's the difference? Why this year, all of a sudden, all the national pundits are agreeing with us who've had our eyes on them and saying, yeah, this is a really good football team. What's the difference? Well, I, th- I think one component is – the, the Big 12 invitation and the knowledge that BYU is transitioning into the Big 12 has heightened the awareness, I think, of the program. And I think people are now looking at this as a program that is now P5, even though it's not official yet, a P5 program. There's more attention to BYU, I think, for that reason. I think even though there was a bowl loss at the end, what BYU did, um, double-digit wins, uh, Tyler Algier being a, a, even just, 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 just his draft pick status, um, you know, keeping BYU in the conversation that way. Kalani is a name people know now as well. Kalani's thought of as a, as, as a young, um, top-level coach. All these things kind of come together to make BYU, again, uh, a, a football name that people are focused on. And then when they look and they dive deeper and they go, oh, who'd they lose? Well, just a really good running back. But look who else is back. I think they go, well, you put all these pieces together, you know, double-digit win team, good coach, um, P5-level talent, uh, great depth, quarterback's back. Yeah, top 25. Greg Rubel is on BYU Sports Nation, the voice of the Cougars. Let's stay with Tyler Algier. We all love the fit that he has for the Atlanta Falcons. But last week I'm thinking, man, Jamal Williams, Tyson Williams, and now Tyler Algier. There are three BYU running backs Mm -hmm. that played here in the last five years now in the league. What does that say about the program and what BYU's been able to recruit here? Yeah, and and they they put the tweet out last week too. You want to go back to even like the six like the number of quarterbacks who've been drafted out of BYU. They're they're as much a quarterback team as any other that Wild. says quarterback factory. So, but I like the fact that you can also look around different positions on the field too and see at almost every position there's a BYU player in the NFL. That 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 to me is as important as anything. Uh, that that you know regardless of the position you pick, you can find someone who went to school here that's playing in the NFL. Not just quarterbacks and not just running backs right now, but all over the field. Uh, that speaks to the true depth of talent and recruiting base that hopefully just gets better and better with BYU playing in the Big 12. You know, we, we always think about quarterbacks when we think about BYU, um, but you and I have been doing this a long time. And when BYU's really good, they dominate on the line of scrimmage, especially on the offensive line. That maybe hasn't been the case in recent years until very recent. Brady right? Christensen was kind of right. the one that kind of started. Yeah, that, I think that's where I think the next step for BYU is getting those guys back in the league because it had been a long time. And, do you, and I look at this offensive line and go, wow, this may be – I said this last year and I'm saying it again. This could be the best group. You, you were out at spring ball a bunch. We saw each other out there. What's your take on the offensive line? And is BYU back into the offensive line business again? It, it, it feels that way to me. It feels like they could put draft picks out of this line, um, you know, one or two guys in, in years to come. And I think that's when ultimately you're going to say that you, you know, have kind of made it back is when, you know, the, the engine to your offense, which is always going to be O-line, is is producing top level talent at at a regular rate. That would be the you know I, I think the next big hope for BYU. And it's only two reports, but two reports have Blake Freeland going as a top twenty pick. What next a great year. build for him! I mean, I mean, he looks, he looks like a guy that could dominate at, at, at the professional level if his if his path continues the way it's been to this point. Yeah, the new formula is recruit high school quarterbacks and turn them into offensive <laughs> line. Yeah. It's just crazy. His story is crazy. But uh, the, when you can put athletes on the O line, uh, guys who've been able to play other positions, I think that's a good sign. So, Jaron Hall, um, does he go out after this next season? And if he does go out, what's his potential? High, how, how high can he be in the NFL draft? Well, I, I want to see, I guess, from Jaron what we all wanted to see from Zach, which was let, let, let's get a full season of football out of him. Um, because the quarterback position at BYU, we've talked about it before, it's been the exception rather than the rule that a guy is a 12- or 13-game starter. Health has been such an issue for BYU quarterbacks. And again, for Jaron, it was last year, right? And, and so can you get a full season out of Jaron Hall? Can you get a 12- or 13-game year out of him? If, you, if he gives you 12- or 13 games, he'll show us and, and uh, you know, the NFL world and, and anyone else who cares to see um, an exceptionally talented uh, sure. player at that spot again but I, I think it's just about can you get him out there all season yeah if he's healthy don't be shocked to see another double digit win season 
Uh, that's, that's what it's all about. Hey, behind that line, he ought to stay healthy behind that line, right? <laughs> but and I, he's the kind of guy, too, that's not going to just want to stay camped behind that line, right? It, his, his, the beauty of his game is how much he can do for you downfield. Sure. With Greg, that line, I'm going to line up a fullback. <laughs> we're going to put Greg at tailback, no. and he's going to rush for 1,000 yards. <laughs> so we're in good shape. Well, and, and back to the point about missing Tyler Algier, yeah, it's a huge loss. But uh, whether it's this level or the next level, if, if there's good blocking in front of you and good options to take attention away, maybe the position you can maybe, um, you know, deal with attrition with good bodies coming in is running back. And hopefully we see that this year. Greg, great to have you with us. Thanks for the breakdown. Baseball, basketball, and some football. Always good. Thanks, awesome. Guys. Thanks, Greg. Hey, coming up, what is the BYU win that nobody saw coming? And has BYU found a new recruiting closer? What's the secret sauce to get guys to choose BYU? This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Call us today. And now, introducing your Mountain America All-Stars. Out of BYU, Alex, Alex Barcelo and Shaylee Gonzalez. Thanks for the warm welcome. So, is this where we get the BYU card? But of course. The only place you can. This is really cool. Yeah, but mine's better. No way. Get your BYU <laughs> card from Mountain America today. It's perfect for students, alumni, and super fans. Hey family, if you're looking for something new to watch, stop scrolling and start streaming. BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together. From bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun, there's something for everyone. Binge entire series, experience all the feels, immerse in nonstop intrigue, and treat yourself to unexpected turns. Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Softball hosts Utah State tomorrow at 8 Eastern time. Watch the game live on the BYU TV app. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. He is Blaine. I am Spencer. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day, you know what to do. Follow us on the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. Former Baylor quarterback Jerry Bohannon announced that he will be transferring to University of South Florida. Wait, what? Which means the Cougars will face Bohannon again in how many days? Countdown to the Bulls. 117, 117 days, Blaine. I, I didn't do so good on that, but I'll do better next time. So. <laughs> okay, so the question is, does this add a revenge factor to the game? I, I have been talking to the coaches about this this uh, South Florida team, and they've, they've already started to break them down. They're like, unbelievably talented team. It makes them a little bit nervous. Now you add Bohan into this. This could be a formidable op opponent. So th is it a rival? Like, does this is a revenge game that Jerry's playing quarterback? Yeah, this is a revenge game for Jaron Hall because Jaron Hall didn't get to finish this game in what was his first start as a collegiate football player. BYU lost that game to a 4-8 and eight team. Now you throw in the quarterback from the Baylor team that beat BYU last year. Yeah, why not? Let's make the uh, rivalry and the revenge factor a little bit more spicy, shall we? BYU's going to go after this quarterback a lot. USF is decent, and we thought, hey, man, they just need a little bit more experience. They got plenty of speed, plenty of talent. We saw them firsthand last year. Like, they're they're okay. Now this opening game gets a little more challenging. Talent all over the field. Any angle you can get, 
that gives you an edge. If you want to call it a, a rivalry game, let's do it. A revenge game, let's do it. This is the vengeance match in Tampa. Hey, you got to play with a chip on your shoulder. Remember the Kentucky Derby. Yes. Fight the guys after the game. That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> on to some baseball. With the sweep this weekend over Pepperdine, speaking of playing with vengeance, BYU now in fifth place of the West Coast Conference standings. What's the chance BYU finishes fourth or higher? We just heard Greg Rebell's take on that. Yeah, and I'm not going to argue with Greg Rebell. I think that third is a very, very good possibility. I think fourth or higher. Um, absolutely. The way they're playing, especially with the momentum of coming off this past week, not just what they did at Pepperdine, but what they sure. did up in Fullerton. Um, I'm going to say yes, they will finish fourth or higher. Okay. They'll be in that, in that postseason tournament. Now, it, they kind of control their own destiny here because they've got LMU in Provo to close right. out West Coast Conference play. So uh, LMU is the team that's one game in front of BYU. If BYU wins that series, then they win the tiebreaker head-to-head -head because they won the head-to-head -head series, and then they get into fourth. Yeah, I like BYU to finish fourth. I think they're playing really good baseball right now. And there's outside chance at third, but I think fourth is a sure. pr pretty solid prediction. All right. Rudy Williams, the recruit that we have been talking about, coming out of Coastal Carolina, requested that he got when he took his official visit that he could take photos with Cosmo. Is Cosmo the new closer for BYU recruiting? What's going on? He's here? certainly a part of it, Blaine. Like, there's a reason that Rudy is saying, "Hey, can I take pictures with your mascot?" Because he knows. He's seen the viral dances with the Cougarettes and all the crazy stunts. And the fact that Cosmo won the mascot poll during the COVID shutdown, which was like the most exciting thing to happen because we couldn't watch actual games, but we had to rate mascots. Cosmo won that bracket, controversy or not. Rudy was paying attention. Yeah, he's definitely one of the closers. I don't know if he's the closer because I'd like to throw us in there too, Blaine. He's internationally known. He absolutely is internationally known. The, the dance that his dance moves with the Cougarettes, who, by the way, are the most successful team in the history of BYU of any kind, right? Yep. They just dominate, and he dominates with them. Oh, yeah. Cosmo's a closer. Yeah, he, he's a closer. He's a closer, no doubt about it. But can we pat ourselves on the back? We get recruits coming through here oh, for BYU yeah. Sports. We give a little karma, too, right? When they come and get a little Sports Nation karma, they come to BYU. Yeah, that's true. That's what happens, so. <laughs> College Football Home tweeted out this picture of some old school college football hats. These are fantastic. With the caption, bring these back. Blaine, should we bring back the old school college football sideline caps? I feel like old school is in and we should bring them back. I might have a BYU cap that looks just like that one at my house right now. If you seriously if, if tried to sell one, that, you would make yeah, good money. I know, on. but old things are becoming new again. Uh, my kids go in my closet and go, hey, where did you get this? And I go, oh, I haven't worn that in 25 years. That thing is cool, Dad. That's it right now. <laughs> so all things old are coming back. Everything that's got, like, especially the one that has, like, the, what is that? It's like a little string across the brim. Yeah. It's almost like a, what do you call that? I don't know. It, that, it's like that, a, cord, a cord string yeah. that goes across the yeah. base of the, the brim. The, the cord hat. hat that goes across the brim, yeah. But those are so popular right now. Old school is in. I say bring them back. Anything old is good in my mind because I'm old. All right. So Blaine, let's finish with some cornhole. Right. Hey, Kyle, Kyle Fannoy <laughs> competed in the American Cornhole League Super Hole 3 tournament Saturday <laughs> in Salt Lake City. What's Kyle doing? So Van Noy and his partner, ACL Pro Sarah Cassidy, they lost in the oh. finals. So not only did you compete made the finals, which former or current BYU player would you want as your cornhole partner? This was so easy for me. Immediately, one name came to mind, Chase Fisher. Ripley, West Virginia. Straight, I mean, Chase Fisher would be the ultimate former BYU athlete cornhole partner because he's hilarious. I'm sure he has mad skills. He's a great shooter, so why would he not be a good cornhole shooter? And West Virginia? Come on. They, isn't there a specific court professional cornhole league in West Virginia? I'm pretty sure they have one. I was going to take Danny Ainge. <laughs> Just because, competitive No, advantage. because he's so stinking so competitive. competitive. Like, he won't yeah. lose at anything. And he will cheat to win if he has to. He will <laughs> run over your ball with a golf cart. He will... If he will do anything to win. <laughs> and I'm just like, I, I don't know Cornhole that well, but if I want to go into that, I'm going with a competitor that will figure out every angle. I'm going with Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge. Yep. That's, that's my partner. That's a great pick. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, just went, I just went with the West Virginia kid. I love it. I love it. So, hey, coming up, rising shout out to, to goals and sweeps. I like that. And let's take a look, a closer look for that matter, at BYU wins nobody saw coming. This is BYU Sports Nation.
I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Do you not know the groom's name? I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is, like, share it with your loved ones. Seeing that comedy, like, helped us do things, that like, we want to use that to help other people in a way. We had one kid whose make-a-wish was to come to Studio C. It made me be, like, these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Saturday, May 21st, BYU Sports Nation will be broadcasting live from the BYU Fan Fest at Sandtown Park in St. George. Come watch a live broadcast of the show at 12 Eastern, 10 Mountain, or watch the show on BYU TV and the app. Blaine, do you think we can fit in nine holes of golf before we do that show live in St. George? I should be coming down with you guys. For, right? I think I'm in New York that weekend, but that's, you know, <laughs> my my daughter, Nicole, and her husband, Blair, live down there. And okay. They pretty much own Santa Clara. Standing invitation, Blaine. So, they run Santa Clara. <laughs> that's what our family does down there, so... Maybe I'll come down. Maybe I'll come straight from New York and join you guys down there for that. There's a direct flight now. <laughs> okay. From New York to St. George. George. Yep, since they got Okay, fine. Fixed. It's a connection. I'm there. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station live from Studio B. On Saturday at the Kentucky Derby, we all witnessed an unbelievable run down the stretch from Rich Strike. 80 to 1 odds as a horse to win. Worst in the field. Final turn. Rich Strike was in 17th position, Blaine. At the final turn, 17th position. Outpaced all the horses, came away as the long shot winner of the Derby. Again, that got us thinking, what's the greatest, maybe most unexpected long shot win in BYU sports history? A win that nobody saw coming. And we have a couple of the, that we agreed on. Then I went kind of off the radar for one that I, I will absolutely yeah, never it, forget, but most people probably don't know about. There, there were two that you and I immediately just came came to our mind. So the first one, I always think football first, right? So so I thought of the BYU-Miami when Miami came in here uh, in 1990, number one in the country, defending national champs. Hey, let's not forget they also won the national championship in 87. So this was a, this was a Miami team on a roll. Um, now, BYU was 16. Um, come, come in ranked number 16. So, so they, they, it was, but they were 13 and a half point underdog in that game. And all the talk leading up to it, national, even local was like, well, man, if BYU can even just stay close in this game, then, then that'll give them a lot of respect. Remember, this is a Miami team that ended up the season number three in the country. So they were as good as build, right? Yes. It wasn't like, oh, they flopped. No, they... Know, this was a very good football team as electric as I've ever seen Lavelle Edwards stadium. Detmer goes 38 of 55 for 406 yards, and that was the Heisman campaign all in one game. BYU has a 28, 21. That's why he won the Heisman Trophy. That win, that, like, that launched it. Like he does. If BYU doesn't beat Miami, he does not win the Heisman Trophy. And and so I, they 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 kind of came out because nobody expected him to win in that one. Uh, I think that the, the couple the other couple more that we have, maybe even more of a. Real unexpected. That I think that's one of the biggest wins in BYU history. It was unexpected, and it launched Ty into his uh, into his, his Heisman. So I, I picked that one, but I'm not sure that's the best. Okay, how about 2017? BYU basketball goes into Spokane. They've won two in a row, by the way, at the, the kennel at McCarthy uh, Arena. And th everyone's thinking there's no way BYU is going to win a third in a row especially not against the number one team in the country on senior night, Gonzaga. I mean, they played in the national championship game that year. 
But Eric Mika and the boys beat number one ranked Gonzaga. They ruined their perfect season. They ruined senior night and just absolutely stunned everyone. They were down 18-2 to two in that game. BYU was down 16 points like four minutes into the game. Yeah, and when we talk about unexpected, later was leaked out that the Gonzaga local paper had already had a front page yes. article on their undefeated regular season and number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. And BYU, they had to throw that <laughs> away. So that's how, like, no, did we, nobody expected that they would go in and, and win that thing. And remember, this was an NIT BYU team. So, so. An NIT team that lost in the first round of yeah, the so NIT. Yeah, so this, this, so this wasn't number 16 BYU beating number one Miami. This was an unranked BYU team beating the number one undefeated team in the last game of the season. Yeah, I, I think that that one trumps, trumps this one, but. You came up with one, man. That that uh, BYU's upset win. I'm gonna let you. You okay. came up with this, and I I looked back on that one. I'm like, yes, I remember this. So shout out to my guy, Coach Steve Cleveland. Uh, hope he's watching and it sees us at some point because he absolutely deserves this notoriety. His first season, 1997-1998 BYU basketball, taking over after BYU went one and 25 the previous season. Right, took over a one and 25 program. Takes his team, BYU was 7-20, seven, seven wins and 20 losses at the time, going into face number 14 New Mexico at the pit in Albuquerque where they had a ridiculously long home winning streak. BYU rocks the black jerseys with the royal blue trim, I believe, for the first time ever, and they shoot lights out. Blaine, they don't just beat New Mexico. They beat New Mexico by 21 points. Again, this, this BYU team was 7-20. and 20. I think they were a 20-point underdog going into this game. They win 83-62 and absolutely stun New Mexico. I, mean, I don't think the Mexico fans knew what to even think leaving the arena. And that team finished ranked number 18 in the final eight people. That was a really good yeah, New Mexico the, the team. The old whack wars, right? And that's, that's a miserable place to try to win a basketball game. The Lobos in the pit were ridiculous. BYU finished that season 9-21. and 21 that year uh, unbelievable and remember they had played new mexico back in january um and they lost by 18 points so nobody expected them to win and so of the three that you and i have talked about maybe maybe that's the one where there was the least expectation at least in gonzaga i know they were number one but byu had beaten them at their place so the one, two in a row. thought that they could do yeah. that right it's when when you think about that new mexico win Maybe only the guys out on the floor in Steve Cleveland thought they could win that thing, and they came with That was a good one that you came up with. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, J.K. Maruji on Instagram answers, 2013 BYU football against number 15 Texas. I was working with ESPN that game, and everyone thought it was going to get ugly, and it did, but in BYU's favor. It's because BYU lost to a terrible Virginia team the week before. So everyone's like, oh, man, oh, oh. should have beaten Virginia. Now you got Texas at home. They're number 15 Good luck. And Taysom Hill ran all over Texas that night. Yeah, it's and this was the beginning of uh, Taysom Hill just shredding Texas for a yep. couple of years. They, my, I have friends that are Texas Longhorn fans and have been lifetime, and they have nightmares of Taysom Hill still because of that, that, that one there and then the one down in Austin in front of a sold-out crowd down there where he just leaped and burst all over people and made him look ridiculous. That was a big one. I like that one. 2013 BYU, Texas. All right. Well, coming up, our elite voice. Yeah, who earns that? Who earns the elite voice in this conversation that we're having right now about greatest upset, most unexpected upset? Plus, a rise and shout-out to uh, at least one BYU team that's on an absolute hot streak. This is BYU Sports Nation. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. 
Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Gather the family for a midweek pick-me-up with an all-new lineup Wednesdays on BYU TV. Is that cool? Is that okay? You want inspiring? Yeah, we got that. Fun? Definitely. And surprising? Well, you'll just have to find out. Enjoy a marathon of good works to lift and inspire you for the rest of your week. See it all Wednesdays on BYU TV or anytime on the free app. Paul Brandt is laying his guitar aside and picking up a hammer. There actually are things that can be done to help people in situations like this. This is our house, for real. I don't think you can ever dream too much. As the receivers become the givers, they in turn help themselves. Watch Paul Brandt's Build It Forward on BYU TV or with the free app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or download the podcast. You just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. Do you like this? Mm -hmm. And don't that, forget, that's how you Google subscribe, it. rate, and review the show. I for forgot us. that that Appreciate was your thing, right? Yeah, no, when you Google, this is how you Google. <laughs> Are you still typing on a keyboard? I don't know. Not on your phone? <laughs> I, I already do this. I do this. You Google it like this. That's all good. So. Both, both work. Our question of the day, what is the win in BYU sports history that nobody saw coming as we look back at an unbelievable Kentucky Derby finish from Rich Strike? At Lime underscore crush on Twitter comes in with some heat for BYU yes. track and field and cross country. 2019 men's cross country national championship. Nobody, and I mean absolutely nobody, had BYU pick to win. And the Cougars just dominated. Flow Track had even produced a documentary already about Northern Arizona University that was supposed to end with them winning. <laughs> Ed good I good Stone night documentary. And his team getting it done. <laughs> I love that one. At Lime Crush on Twitter. That's a good that's a good that's take well right done. there. That's yeah. outstanding. That's right so. there with 2017 BYU basketball winning at Gonzaga. Only this is for a national championship, Blaine. Yeah. Yeah. This ended in a natty. Yeah. Hey, in response to our elite voice of the day, um, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. How about at Ames Flames? Yep. The best is yet to come, my friends. Oh, okay. It's gonna be BYU's win over Notre Dame in Vegas. Whoa. Although big game boomer, she says, yeah, side yeah, big coming. Game big game boomer. <laughs> It's calling the shot ahead okay. of time. Okay, Adam Slanes, like I like it. Today's rise and shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. I'd like to give one to Ashley Hatch, who I think is going to lead the NWSL in scoring once again. All she does is score goals. She plays for Team USA. She's amazing. I'm, I'm going to go out to BYU baseball, who had an outstanding sweep week yes. last week and last weekend, and they're on the rise in the standings. Our thanks to today's guest, Greg Rubel. And we're sorry to Dennis Pitta again because we ran out of time. Conversation <laughs> continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use, Facebook. use the hashtag BYUSN. We're playing up, Spencer. Go Cougs!